Welcome, travelers, to Adventures in Security. In this video, we review the operation of the Windows Security Reference Monitor, exploring the Windows security objects used and how user and process access is granted. The script for this video is provided as a study guide in the video description. If you like what you see, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to be sure you do not miss future videos. The Windows Security Reference Monitor, SRM, is a critical component of the Windows operating system operating in kernel mode. Using the user mode security subsystem, its primary role is to enforce security policies and access controls within the system. The SRM acts as a gatekeeper, ensuring unauthorized users and processes cannot access protected resources. This is achieved using Windows security components, such as access tokens, discretionary access control lists, DACLs, and security identifiers, SIDs. The SRM is integral to the Windows security architecture because it provides a centralized mechanism for enforcing security policies, policies managed by system and user administrators. This centralization simplifies the management of security policies and ensures consistency across the system. The SRM's enforcement of security policies is based on the principle of least privilege, which means that users and processes are granted only the minimum level of access necessary to perform their tasks. This principle helps minimize the risk of accidental or intentional security breaches. In addition to enforcing access controls, the SRM also audits and logs security-related events. When a user or process attempts to access a protected resource, the SRM can generate an audit log entry that records the details of the access attempt. This information is invaluable for forensic analysis and can help administrators identify and respond to security incidents. The SRM's functionality is closely tied to the Windows security model, which is based on the concept of security principles. A security principle, also known as a subject, is an entity that can be authenticated and authorized to access resources. Security principles can be users, groups, or computer accounts. Each security principle is assigned a unique SID, which is used to identify the principle in security-related operations. Access tokens are another key component of the SRM's operation. An access token is a data structure that contains information about a subject's identity and privileges. When a user logs on to a machine or via a domain controller, an access token is created. The access token includes security identifier, SID. This is a unique identifier for the user's account. The system uses it to identify the user and control access to resources. Group SIDs. These are the SIDs for the groups to which the user belongs. Group SIDs help determine the user's permissions based on group memberships. Logon SID. This identifies the current logon session. It is unique for each logon session and helps track user activity during that session. Privileges. These are specific rights assigned to the user or the user's groups. Privileges determine what actions the user can perform, such as shutting down the system or changing the system time. Owner SID. This identifies the token's owner. The owner's SID is used to determine the ownership of objects created by the user. Primary group. SID. This identifies the user's primary group. The primary group SID is used in access control decisions and is included in the security descriptor of objects created by the user. Default Discretionary Access Control List, DACL. This is used when the user creates a secure object without specifying a security descriptor. The default DACL defines the object's default permissions. Token Source C. This indicates the source of the access token and information about how it was created, such as through a network logon or a local logon. Token Type. This specifies whether the token is a primary or impersonation token. A primary token represents a user in a process, while an impersonation token represents a user in a thread. Impersonation level. This indicates the level of impersonation. It determines the extent to which a server process can act on behalf of a client process. The levels include anonymous, identification, impersonation, and delegation. Restricting SIDs. These are optional and can restrict the token. 
Restricting SIDs limits the actions that the user can perform, even if the user has the necessary permissions. Session ID. This identifies the session associated with the token. It helps track user activity and manage resources for each session. User-specific data. This may include additional attributes specific to the user. User-specific data can include user profile paths, home directories, and other custom attributes. These components collectively define the security context and determine what actions the user can perform on the system. They are essential for maintaining security and controlling access to resources in a Windows environment. The SRM then uses the access token to determine the user's access rights to resources throughout the session. Discretionary Access Control Lists, DACLs, define the access permissions for each resource. A DACL is a list of access control entries, ACEs, each specifying the access rights granted or denied to a particular security principle. When a user or process attempts to access a resource, the SRM compares the access token with the DACL to determine whether access should be granted or denied. The SRM enforces security policies by performing access checks and ensuring that all access to system resources is authorized according to the defined security policies. Here's a detailed explanation of how the SRM enforces security policies. 1. Complete mediation. The SRM is invoked whenever a monitored access is attempted. This means that every access request to a protected resource, such as files, processes, or registry keys, is intercepted by the SRM. This ensures that no access can bypass the security checks. 2. Access Control Policies The SRM enforces access control policies based on the identity of subjects, users, or processes, and the permissions defined in the Access Control List. ACL associated with the object. The ACL specifies the permissions granted or denied to different users and groups. 3. Access Check Execution The SRM performs an access check by comparing the permissions in the ACL with the information in the subject's access token. This involves several steps. O identify requested access. The SRM identifies the type of access being requested, e.g., read, write, execute. O evaluate ACEs. The SRM evaluates each access control entry in the ACL. An ACE specifies the permissions granted or denied to a particular user or group. O match SID. The SRM checks if the SID in the access token matches any SID in the ACEs. If a match is found, the SRM considers the permission specified in that ACE. O determine permissions. The SRM determines whether the requested access is allowed or denied based on the permission specified in the matching ACEs. If any ACE explicitly denies the requested access, the SRM denies the request. If no ACE explicitly denies the access and at least one ACE allows it, the SRM grants the request. 4. Decision Enforcement The SRM returns the decision to the object manager. The object manager grants access to the resource if it is allowed and works with the resource manager to allocate needed resources. If access is denied, the object manager blocks the request and returns an error to the requesting process. This step ensures that the decision made by the SRM is enforced, maintaining the integrity of the security policies. That's it for this video. Again, if you liked what you saw, if you learned anything, please click the thumbs up. And until next time, be careful what you click.